Thanks, Allison. Hi, all. Glad you can join. It looks like there's still some people joining here. Um, while we're just waiting for the last few people to get loaded into this breakout room, did anyone have any questions or any specific things they wanted to see in Power BI? Or do you just want me to go through um, how to get data, things like that? You can go ahead and unmute if you're if you have a question. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Rashid. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, actually, when you mentioned uh, uh, we can bring data from a PDF to Power BI, I really like that one. <laughs> so I I would like to see how that works because uh, we receive uh, PDF reports, and it's always a hassle to convert those to Excel or some way to analyze them. So that would be wonderful if, you know, yeah, you give us a hint of how it works. Okay, yeah, that's actually a pretty simple thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. When you get the PDFs, is, is there like a table or something that you're pulling the data out of to put it into um, Excel? So basically I do extract or convert uh, through PDF, there is like a tool in PDF that will give me an Excel, but it will be a really bad table a lot of times with a lot of lines and things that I have to clean it up. Um, right. So, and, and that's those that are actually, I would say searchable. If it's like a picture, probably I, I won't be able to do anything with it uh, unless, yeah, the PDF has been uh, out of, uh, a Word document or something that is readable for the software. That's what I would right. say. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just open up a new BI and I can show you what to do. Uh, and this is something that you can do on almost anything. If there's something that is recognizable as data, as a table or as numbers or something, whether it's on a web page or a PDF, right. you will be able to pull that out using Power BI. So let me just share my screen. Where did I put it? Okay, so this is just a new fresh um, Power BI that mm -hmm. I opened up that doesn't want me to move it. And all you have to do up here on the top, there's a, a little thing that says get data and it just shows a little icon indicating, you know, a spreadsheet or a database there. Right. And if you, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> if you go into get data, there's this huge list of places where you can access your data. Um, and on here, it doesn't say anything about PDFs. So what all you need to do if that if a data source doesn't show up on when you say get data, just hit more. And it might take a second. And it might take more than a second. Right. I actually I now see PDF showed up. I have oh, it installed. There. Yeah. So if you just click on PDF and connect, it's gonna ask for your PDF. In this case, I've got a, and this, this isn't gonna have anything that'll be recognizable as data. It was just a PDF that showed up, but that's all you need to do is connect to that PDF. And it'll look for anything on that PDF that looks like data. And then, you know, if it comes up with a few things, like in this case, you can mm -hmm. ask it, for a, a view so you can see, okay, is this what I'm actually looking for? And in this case, I have a calendar on that page. So it's actually seeing that as data. Mm. Um, and then in this case, it's a slightly different layout of the calendar. So if I want, if that's the data that I want, I'm gonna say yes and load. And it'll go through all the loading
So now once I'm here, I've got my PDF data that it was looking at. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, what it does is if it sees numbers, it's going to automatically think somebody's going to want to add these. So it'll put these sums in front. If that's if you don't ever want it to add, like in this case, it was dates, you mm -hmm. can just go in here and tell it not to summarize those things. And then it won't try to force it into summaries. Right. So, and just go through each of those, but that's, as long as you've got something that, that can be recognizable as data, Power BI will pull it out for you. Got it, nice. This is really cool. You're welcome. Yeah. Does anyone else have a, any questions, specific questions or? Anything you'd like to see? Hey Bev, it's Peter. I always forget how to turn long data wide. Can you give us a demo of that if you have? I something? can. I don't. Or you want wide data long? Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know if I have a easy access set of wide data. Or vice versa is fine oh, too. Oh wait. Uh. Which one of your data sets was wide? Oof. In your <laughs> map? I don't remember. Remember? Okay. No big deal. Okay. So um, Peter had a question about turn about changing long or wide data into long. So in this case, uh, what have I got? I've got some text files. So I'm going to find my text files. Uh, any of these look like wide data to you, Peter? Yes, J the JV algae data or fish is fine. JV, so this one at the bottom? Uh, or no, JV. No, the one at the bottom, sorry. The 12 set 27. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna. If, do you mind if you that? also say the difference between wide and long data? <laughs> um, okay, this is wide data. So what this is is we've got species down the side. Um, and can everyone see this when I reopen when I open this? Yep. A yep. set of data. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then across the top, um, these are sampling events. Okay, so this is telling me that something was this, whatever species fish this is, was sampled on a number of different times. Quite often, um, data visualization systems don't handle the data going across your page like that. So what Power BI and Tableau and even Excel prefer is for all that data to be stacked on top of each other. So it wants uh, this species from this site in this first cell, and then this species from the next site in the cell below it. So it'll, it'll turn it into what we call long data, okay? That's a pain in the butt to try to do it in Excel. So what we can do, if you need to do any major transformations, here is I can go to transform data. I haven't loaded anything into Power BI yet. I just went to transform data and it gives me a new thing. I want to move all of these locations to go down my table. So it's gonna be a super long table, but it's gonna be a little easier for Power BI to read. Very simple thing, it works a lot like Excel. I'm going to click on the first column that I'm interested in, go to the end of the table, hit shift and click, and that highlights everything. And then up here in the top, along the top tabs, I have transform. Is that what I wanted? Or is it? Oh, wait. And this one, I don't do this super often. So, I'm, I have to find my way, <laughs> sorry. Uh, go to 
columns. Oh, here we go. We have transpose. So what this is telling me, is that what I want? Peter, you should have warned me that you were going to ask this. Sorry, it's, <laughs> it's transpose. Oh, no, here we go. Sorry oh. about that. Um, like I said, I don't do this very often, but if you, if you just hover over some of these um, little tools, it'll tell you what it's going to do. And what I'm doing here is unpivoting the columns. So I just click on that. I'm going to unpivot. And what it did was it took all of those columns that were going across my page and it put them down, down my page. So now I can see what Power BI is going to be working with. And it, it looks like, oh, we've just got a ton of zeros and that's fine. Um, Power BI, Tableau, any of these systems can work with that and deal with the zeros, but it makes it a much easier set of data for these visualizations to work with. So once I've done that transformation, I go back to home and I just say either apply or close and apply. And now that's going to upload that data. And now it has only three columns. So it's got the species, and the attribute, which was which is what it's calling the site location, and then the value. And you can either leave that as to be summarized or not. So, and then from there, um, you can, I don't know, make a, make a pie chart, throw your values in, which is not gonna do much of anything right away. But then if I turn my species into a legend, it'll give me a breakdown of the percents of species that we have and automatic, you get an automatic value and percent of that particular species in that set of data. So very simple to use with things like that. You can, when you've got data set in something like this, you can play around and see if there's different ways, better ways of showing the data just by going through these icons. That, oh, that's not very useful, is it? <laughs> icons at the top and see what we've got. So, um, and just sort of play around with what you've got. And I'll go back to one of these and we've got the data that we had. Did that help Peter? Yes, thank you. Anything anyone else is interested in. We also have mapping ability. I don't have anything here that would be mappable, but if I pull in some data, um, hmm. I've got, Helen Viro screen. Okay, now here's another thing that you can do. I mentioned that I had been using Cal and Viro screen data for, um, for that one um, visualization that I was showing. If you have a set of data, like Cal and Viro screen has a ton of data in it. If I only wanna focus on certain things, I want to look at the Calen virus screen percentile range, the percentile, and the disadvantaged communities. All the other stuff over here, I'm not interested in. So rather than pulling everything into Power BI and have this unwieldy list to deal with, I can go into, again, go into transform data find all the stuff that I don't want to pull into Power BI. And I'm gonna make sure if I've got lat long in here, I don't wanna lose it. Okay, I'll hang on to state 
but I'm going to get rid of everything else. And all I have to do is hit delete. And now I've minimized my data set. So when I pull that into Power BI, I've got it all there. And now the beauty of this, if you suddenly go, oh, oh, wait, I needed some of that data. If you go over here to applied steps, this is keeping track of everything you do. And I can just hit remove that, hit the little X, and I've got all those columns back. And I'm back to what I started with. So some very easy ways to move things around and be able to work with the data that you've got. But I'm going to take that stuff out again because I don't want it. So that's not going to delete the data forever uh, from the data set, right? You, it's just Correct. for your for your visualization. Correct. And even you know if you go through and do a bunch of other things to the data. If you wanna go back and add those columns back in, all you have to do is go back to this applied steps right. and click the X beside removed columns and those columns will come back in. Gotcha, thanks. So yeah, your data set hasn't been touched. It's all what's being done and uploaded into the Power BI. So now I've got that. I'll see if I can do, I should be able to map on zip code or census tract. So, okay, I, I didn't close. So now I've got this data. I'm going to see if it will accept. I didn't have lat long in this set of data, but I do have zip codes which now, as I mentioned, when Power BI sees numbers, it's gonna to try to assume that you want to add or subtract or something. I don't wanna do that to zip codes. So I'm gonna tell it to not summarize. And we'll see if it'll accept zip codes. There you go. So I immediately created a map um, now, and this tells us we've got some weird zip codes going on. So whether those are incorrect, yeah. So people have entered zip codes incorrectly and they're showing up in weird spaces. So this is a good way to do a QAQC on your location data is put it in a map and see if you end up with locations in France in this case. Quite often what we get is locations will come up in, you know, over in, Europe, Africa, because um, when people are entering lat long, they forget to put the negative for the longitude. And that's a really simple thing that you can correct, again, in Power BI, so it's not touching your original data. You can change those negatives to positive, or positives to negatives and get the lat long into, into California. Um, you can't correct it when people put in lat longs of zero, zero, or just random numbers. But if it's just a simple, they didn't put the negative on the longitude, that's an easy correction. So any other specific questions or anything you'd like to see? Allison, hey. do you have anything you want to show off? Um, hey, Bev, real quick. Um, this is Michelle. Uh -huh. um, I just want to say this is really awesome. Thanks for both your presentation and then also demoing all this stuff live for us. Um, I have a very quick question about publishing um, our data visualizations. You mentioned briefly in your presentation that it's a really simple process and um, that we would need to contact DIT, I think, um, to, to get it publicly available. Is that, do we just contact DIT help desk and do we have to worry about like the number of licenses or anything like that? No, um, yes and no. Uh, yes, just contact DIT help desk and tell them you're working in Power BI and you need a license and a workspace and they will set you up with a workspace um, let me grab one here. I'm going to 
switch what I'm sharing. So what you do, I'm back to uh, the language linguistic isolation tool. Um, once you've contacted IT and explained that you know, you're working in Power BI and you need to be able to publish this stuff, they'll give you a license and they're, they're unlimited essentially. So anybody who needs a license can get a license. They will, they will give you your own personal workspace. But if you're working with a group where you need multiple people to access the Power BIs, they'll create a sort of a community workspace for you. So we, in OWIMA, we have a, an OWIMA data workspace. Um, we have a performance reports workspace. So things that are specifically perform performance reports, we put in that workspace. Um, things that are data, sort of more general data related, we'll put in the OWIMA data workspace. So once you've done that, um, and you've got that set up, just make sure you save whatever you've been working on. And then over on the far right on the top here, there's a little publish button. It's going to ask you what workspace you want to put that in. So you can see here, I've got access to quite a few workspaces. Most of them are performance report related. This particular linguistic isolation tool is housed in the data team workspace. So if I've made any changes, need to update that, all I do is select that data team workspace, click publish. It's gonna ask if I'm sure, do I wanna do this? Because that, data, the, that um, Power BI is already there. And if I replace it, the old one's gonna disappear. Yes, I wanna replace that. And then sometimes this takes a little while to publish, especially if you're on a slow, uh, a slow internet connection, which I am, and someone's running the printer behind me. <laughs> so when this, once it's published, it'll ask you if you want to open that. And it now it will open it in that workspace. And I think the workspace opened outside of the shared screen. So I'm going to share, which one, this one. Nope. I think I blew it. I think I lost the, Anyone got an idea of how I can share a bunch of stuff? <laughs> um, let's see. I think you mentioned you have one screen. Uh, probably just minimize the ones you don't want. I, I doubt if you have to oh. go in and out. Yeah, the way I shared, I just shared the visualization. So I did have to go out of that and reshare. So now this is that same visualization, but this is in the, the service location. So this is in my workspace and it sets it up slightly differently. So now all of my tabs are listed on the side. Um, now I have access to these tabs up here and can click around and from here, this is where I can share things publicly. So if I go to file and down to embed report, I can push it straight into SharePoint. If you have you know, an internal group that you wanna work with. Um, and then if you wanna make it public, if you put it on the, this first one website or portal, that will only be accessible to internal um, viewers. If you push it to this one, publish to web, it'll give you a code that you can either use in an email or it'll give you code that can be embedded into an actual web page. And these will be fully accessible to the public doing it this way. Uh, and then you've got, you know, once you're in this 
um, service. You've got some other things that you can do. You can even make some edits from here. You don't have to go back to the desktop version. You can do editing right in the service. I personally, I try not to do changes. The service does not have the same functionality as the desktop version. But if you need to do some little things, you'll probably find it's just as easy to do it from here and then just you know make whatever changes you need and move on. So, and that, I don't have a whole lot else to say unless someone else has a specific question. Um, Bev, I think we have five minutes left. That I saw, um, Devin, I think, sent a message indicating that. How about you, um, Allison? Do you have anything specific you'd like to share that I haven't covered? Um, not really. I just wanted to point out that in Bev's demo, um, she was working in one Power BI file and she was able to pull in data from different sources. So like from that PDF and then from that CSV and then a, t a, t um, a text file. Um, so I just want to point that out that you can pull in data from different sources. And then if you want to, you could always join them together using um, Power Query and then joining them or um, appending the table and stuff like that. So that's also really cool. Something you can't really do in Excel. Right. Yeah. And another thing, and I'll, I unshared, I'll go back and try to share here again. You always find things that you want to talk about after. Uh, which one do I want? Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay. So back to this language one that doesn't want to move. Um, if I have several sets of data that can all be connected, you know, in this language one, I was talking about census tracts and counties and things like that. I can go into this little icon on the far left where it says model. And there I can start making connections between my data sets. So you can see here, there's different, there's like these little arrows showing connections between data sets. And what this shows here, and it highlighted what I'm connecting, I've connected the census tracts in these two web or in these two data sets. And I've got it connected in a one directional way. So if I make changes in this data set here, or if I do um, any kinds of filtering using this data set, it will affect this data set. But if I try to filter back the other way, it won't because I didn't allow that. But over in this case, I've also connected the census tract, but I've got this one set up that it will filter both directions. And I don't ask me why I've got one direction and why. <laughs> I can just as easily set this up to go both directions for whatever reason, it just fell on that. And then over here, you can see when I highlight the arrows on this, uh, little connector, I've connected county between two sets. So I connected the county of the Calenvirus Screen 4.0 with this data set. And this is a data set that I just, I created this one in order to figure out what counties belong in the different regions. So here I've made a county to county set so that I can use region as a filter and it'll find all the counties within the region because Cal and Virus Screen doesn't care about waterboard regions. So I created this sort of a go between data set so that I could make some other connections between things. And I think we're pretty much running out of time at this point. Can so, I ask a quick, quick question? Uh, thanks for uh, explaining this one. So I I have used pivot table on Excel a little bit, <clears throat> and I remember I, I had to uh, rearrange my data set. Like actually, you mentioned as a long data to be able to use that easier on a pivot table. So basically, this does 
all that, as you mentioned, by transferring to uh, like wide to long and also like these connections, we don't really have to figure out which one goes horizontal, which, go, which one goes vertical and stuff like that on a pivot table. Like correct. Pivot table. Okay. Yeah, you're correct. Okay, got it, thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. And if anyone has any questions or needs some help with anything, um, I'm available to help out and probably Allison can help you with any questions that you might have. So there are people who work in this stuff a lot that, you know, if you're stuck on something, just please do send an email or um, set up a Teams meeting and I'm more than happy to, to give you a hand with anything that you need. And it looks like we're going to be yanked back to the main room. So thank you all for being here. Again, let me know if you need any help, and I'll give you what help I can. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Allison. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.